Hey, this is Matt with Alpha Analyst. In this video, we're going to go over how we can identify potentially shady accounting based on companies using unusual fair value classifications. Let's talk about why it matters how a company values its assets. So if a company were to be less than scrupulous, it could increase the value of its assets, especially by leveraging the increased subjectivity that they're allowed to use under level two and level three valuation methodologies. So this sounds a little bit complicated, but we're going to break it down as far as what it means by level one, level two, level three, and the whole concept of fair value. So level one valuation, this is basically the company using a quoted market price to value its assets. So. For example, there's a quoted market price for the stock price of Netflix. If you want to see what the price is, you can simply go to the stock market and you can see, okay, well, the stock is currently trading at this price. Here's the current bid. Here's the current ask. Here's the open price. Here's the closed price. And you can get relatively good information about the company's value based upon looking at the fair valuation of the company's shares on the stock market or another quoted market. For level two, this is a situation where you have observable market inputs. So for example, if you have bonds issued by the state of California, even if those bonds were not traded recently, you can get enough inputs from the market to be able to value those bonds and to be able to come up with a pretty good assessment of how much those bonds are worth based upon leveraging inputs that are available elsewhere in the market. However, when you get to level three, this is where you have no observable market inputs. So for example, if you have credit default swaps that don't get traded very often, and it's highly unclear what the price should be, a company can use its own internal valuation model to value those assets, and it's highly subjective. So the company isn't necessarily held to a specific price that's being traded out in the market because that price doesn't exist. So the company has a lot more leeway to value what those assets are worth. So the main difference, and this is the big takeaway. So if you're looking for the overall summary about what's the difference between level one versus level two versus level three, here's the main summary. Level one assets, when you use level one valuations, these are the least subjective. So these are the assets that are the least likely to be misvalued because the value of these assets is based on a quoted market price. So we're not quite as concerned about those. Level two assets, these do have a moderate level of subjectivity. So you could say that we are a little bit more concerned about whether or not these assets are valued fairly. However, when it comes to level three, this is a situation where the company has tremendous leeway as far as valuing the assets. They still need to get the auditors of their firm comfortable with the values that they're using before the auditors will sign off on their financial statements. But think of it this way. Companies have far more subjectivity for level three than they do for level one. And they have a good amount of subjectivity for level two assets. So the more subjectivity that's available, the more likely it is that the company could have assets that are valued different than what the true value is. So the fair value classification gains increased relevance in a crisis. So for example, during the most recent financial crisis, the liquidity in the market deteriorated significantly. So some assets that previously had a price, they no longer had a price. So you may have had a level one asset in the past that there were no longer any bids quoted in the marketplace. So it went from being a level one asset to a level three asset. And therefore it became especially important to see which companies value their assets as level one, level two, or level three. Here's an example using Bear Stearns. So before it went down, Bear Stearns had level three assets that were 314% as large as its total capital. So that means that if the company's level three assets, hypothetically, if they were overstated by 32%, the company's shareholders would have been completely wiped out. And that's based upon the company having a very large amount of level three assets. And given that the assets were fluctuating so much, it wouldn't be unreasonable for the assets to be misvalued given how uncertain the valuation was. So if you see a company using a large amount of level three assets, it's worth looking into. And another data point is Lehman. So Lehman Brothers, their ratio of level three assets compared to the capital was 171%. So they had far more level three assets than they did for capital. So let's talk about how to interpret level three assets. So just because a company has a disproportionately large amount of level three assets, it does not at all mean that the company is doing anything wrong. It doesn't mean that the company's assets are overall riskier. And it definitely does not mean that the company's assets are overall less liquid. The company is not necessarily stronger or weaker than peers. So we're not trying to read too much into level three assets. If a company does have a disproportionately large amount of level three assets, 
it is very important that we look into the reasons why. So we can find out the reasons typically by looking at the company's financial disclosures. This can be the company's quarterly 10Q, it could be its annual 10K filed with the SEC. And by looking at these documents, including the footnote disclosures, we can get a better sense for what's going on and why is the company valuing so many of its assets using the highly subjective level three methodology as compared to level one or level two. We could also assess the amount of level three assets the company has relative to its peers. So for example, let's say that the company has a large amount of real estate on its balance sheet that's valued at fair value. It's not uncommon for real estate to be valued as a level three asset. And that's just due to the availability of the data points that are available to value real estate. So real estate is very unique and it's hard to value it. There's obviously no uh, level one quoted market price because it's highly subjective as far as what the value is. So a company could have a lot of level three assets that's a real estate company and that could be perfectly reasonable. But if it does have a lot of level three assets, we want to find a reasonable reason why. And if it has a good reason, that's great. We can move on and it's not a big deal. But if there's not a justifiable reason, we might want to look into it further to be able to find out why does the company have such a large amount of level three assets and could these assets possibly be misvalued? So overall, if the company has a large amount of level three assets, it doesn't necessarily mean that there is a problem with the company and it definitely does not mean that the company has any shady accounting whatsoever. However, what it does mean is that we do need to investigate the reasons why and we can typically find the answers to that in the 10K and the 10Q disclosures. If you like this video, I think you would love the financial analysis kit. It contains a video that goes over our top 10 favorite tricks in Microsoft Excel. It also contains three graphs in Excel that you can download, and it also has videos that go over how you can customize these graphs to meet your own personal needs. And finally, the kit contains a report on the one word that you can tell your boss that can supercharge your career. So how can you obtain your kit? Just go to aanalyst.com kit, and you can type in your email address and access the kit and start using it today.